First then, I'm going to show you one way that we can slice up a break you've created with one or more groups. Switching over to group B now, and I'll do this all from the hardware this time. And now activating sampling mode, you can see you have all the same tabs for record, edit, and so on. So we'll set it to record mode. Then this time we want to choose internal rather than external, because I want to record the break I've just created as a new audio sample. Then for input, we can choose one of the groups specifically, or the master if you're using several groups. I'm only using the one group, so it doesn't matter what I select there, but I'll keep it on master. Then we're going to have it synced and set to two bars, as that's the length of the break. Then I'll hit play, and then hit start during the second bar of the break, so recording will begin next time it cycles. So now we have the break as a two bar audio sample on the first pad in group B. And you can see the waveform for it up here. So we could go to the zone section, and then on the second page of controls, enable loop if we wanted it to be a continuous loop once again. But what we're going to do instead is go into slice mode. What happens then is the sample is sliced up into segments, with each segment temporarily mapped to a pad. So it's a bit like another pad mode, where the sample in sound slot 1 can now be played using all of the pads. The number of slices is set here, so if it's 4, then I need to hit a pad every 2 beats to recreate the sample. Or for 8, I need to hit a pad every beat. Or with 16, which uses all of the pads, I need to hit a pad every quaver, or 8th note. But I can also slow the break right down if I like. Or play the pads with a skippy style to create my own swing or shuffle. So at the moment I'm just playing the pads in sampling mode. But if I want to make this a more permanent fixture in the group, then I can use the apply button, which then takes each of the slices and maps them to different MIDI notes, so they can be played back using the pads in keyboard mode. So essentially it's exactly the same as slice clip to MIDI in live, or create new sampler track for region in logic. For some reason the tempo is set to half of what it actually is right now, so I'm going to bring it up to 185 first. Otherwise the break will play twice as fast as it should. Then I have options for the location I want to map the slices to. I could choose all the sounds in a group, or to map them to different notes within one sound. For example, to create a new group with the slices in, I just hit apply to, and then choose a group for them to be exported to. And then hit apply. Then you can see if I go to pattern arrange mode here, that we've got a new pattern with the two bar sample being recreated by slices on all 16 sounds in the group. If I undo that though, and choose apply to, and then a group, and then a sound slot within the group, and then hit apply, then we get the same sort of thing, only the sample is recreated by just one sound slot, with each of the slices on different MIDI notes within it as you can see with the pads in keyboard mode here. In the software, slice exporting is easy to do as well. Just clicking apply, as on the hardware, maps the slices to notes on the same sound slot. Or you can use this drag tool to map the slices to another group like so. The way the slice export behaves can be set using the options in the drop down menu where you can choose whether a pattern is created or not, and whether it creates a pattern the length of the slices, or shortens or loops the slices to fit an existing pattern. And this setting applies to both apply and apply to modes. One advantage to having the slices mapped to a single sound slot like this is not only does it not take up a whole group, although this isn't such an issue now Machina has unlimited group numbers, but also I can have some more fun with this in sampler now, as I can go to the amplitude envelope, and bring the sustain down, 
and then use the decay to control the length of all of the slices to create a cool gated effect. Now all of those slices have been mapped, going to the zone display and sampling mode shows you information about each of the samples, as technically you're multi-sampling now, which is the name for a sampler patch that has lots of samples mapped across the keyboard rather than just one. There's a handy graphic display at the top showing you the keyboard and each of the zones, so you can change the settings for each of the slices if you like. For example, I could map a slice to a different key and adjust the velocity range so it's only triggered by larger velocity amounts, for example. And you can see these settings changing in the map section below, which corresponds to the last page of encoders on the hardware. Here, you can also set individual amplitude envelope amounts, as well as tuning and level settings, and so on. Now, let's take a look at slicing an external loop. I'll move on to group C, even though I've only used one sound slot in group B just to keep things separate. And now, in the browser section, I'm going to choose a sample from my library, from the DD Funk All Stars Loop Masters pack, in the Live Bass Loops folder. I'll go for this one. So I'll drag it onto sound slot 1, and let's have a listen to that. So the sample's really long. It's an 8 bar sample at 92 BPM. In slice mode, you can see Machina appears to have worked out its BPM and sliced the whole thing. But I could actually change the tempo manually here if I wanted to, to set it exactly to 92. Now, some other changes I could make here are to set a particular number of slices. Or, if I'd rather split the sample up according to musical values, then I could change it to grid mode, and then choose a resolution here which is basically the same in this example as the sample is a whole number of bars, but you can create much smaller slices this way. But what I'm going to do instead is use another mode called Detect, which slices the sample up according to its transients. The number of slices you get is according to the sensitivity setting. So if I bring this up, you'll see more slices start to appear. And you can also make use of the Slice and Remove tools though. If you want to make your own slices, or get rid of any that Machina creates. So now I feel it split the sample up the way I want, with most of the individual bass notes sounding on their own pads. I could hit apply and it would map them out the same way as it mapped out the previous drum break. Then I could use the sound slot in keyboard mode to create my bass line. But this time I'll use the whole group instead. What I'll do is keep the whole bass sample as it is on sound slot 1, and I'll map some of these slices to the other sound slots in the group, which I can do using the Apply To feature, just by dragging and dropping them directly from the waveform onto different sound slots. Now I've got all the slices I want from the loop mapped to some of the pads in the group but at the moment they overlap when I play pads very quickly from one to the next. Hopefully you have an idea why this is, and how you might be able to resolve it. It's because they're all set to one-shot mode at the moment, meaning they're all playing fully when I press a pad, rather than stopping when I let go. So I could fix it by going into the second sampler page for each sound slot and setting them to a different mode like ADSR. But what I'm going to do instead is use a different technique and that's setting them all to a choke group. Setting a sound slot to a choke group means that when you play it, any sound slots that are also in that choke group will stop playing. So now I can record in a bass line to go with my drums. <laughs> 